Well, we can now speak to Hassam Abu Gabal. He is a reporter at the Middle East Business Intelligence who joins me now live from Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Thanks so much for joining us, Hassam. So Qatar says it was hacked, and now an Iranian parliamentarian has just come out to say that this rift was actually caused during President Trump's visit to the region and that he has made efforts to foment division between Arab countries. What do you make of that statement and Qatar's defense as well? Um, there have been a lot of accusations thrown around over the last uh, couple of weeks and uh, have all escalated and almost climaxed uh, this morning. It's difficult to see uh, how much basis there is for each accusation, but the facts remain that the sanctions imposed by uh, Saudi Arabia and the UAE um, are very severe, very serious, and send a clear message to Qatar that Riyadh will not accept the way that uh, it perceives Qatar to be behaving. So it's it's an interesting moment, an unprecedented moment, and I think uh, more important than uh, the number of accusations that are being thrown around are the or is the severity of the sanctions imposed on Qatar, which are very serious and have a, um, a very serious economic and social um, effect on the country, on the small country, which is very dependent on its geography, very close to Saudi Arabia and surrounded by the GCC countries. It's, it is interesting to note that you do call these sanctions, because now we are getting reports that uh, food delivery trucks are actually lining up now at the Saudi-Qatari uh, border, They're not being allowed to cross. You think it's akin to sanctions, so then what can we expect Qatar, how I should say, can we expect Qatar to start suffering from a blockage of imports, especially via its only land border? Yeah, well, absolutely. Like you said, it, it seems like this is, um, these are sanctions being imposed on the Qatari government or the Qatari state. And at this stage, there are very few words to describe the decisions from Saudi Arabia and the UAE other than sanctions. Like I said, there's a huge impact. So for food supplies, for example, is a big problem for the Qataris because 50% of its food imports or up to 50% of Qatar's food imports come from Saudi Arabia and the UAE and 50% of all uh, food imports and, and a similar figure for all imports in general come through the Saudi land border. So so, it, you know, at, at this moment, it's very difficult to determine or to predict what will happen. But if this was to extend to a longer period of time, definitely we could see um, an impact on uh, Qatar's ability to procure and supply its uh, economy and its citizens with key food uh, products, but also with key building materials and, uh, and raw materials that it often uh, buys from Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And as, um, you know, as it's very clear, Saudi, uh, Qatar is working towards the World Cup in 2022. That involves a huge number of infrastructure, construction, and transport projects that require huge amounts of raw materials and building materials. So it's difficult to determine at this stage what it will mean for the Qataris, but definitely if this is to extend to a, to a longer period of time, we could see inflation increase because of the Qataris' inability to access uh, enough food for its citizens. And we could also see construction and contract awards uh, be delayed uh, for and this would, you know, affect uh, Qatar's build-up for the World Cup. Right. Difficult to determine at this stage. Uh, now, Hossam, Turkey, um, who has cordial relations with uh, the Arab nations involved, has offered to step in and mediate at this point. Do you see that as part of the solution here? Um, I think mediation is likely to start with the Kuwaitis rather than the, than the Turkish government. We saw the Kuwaitis in 2014 play, play a, a pretty successful role in mediating uh, the warming of relations between Riyadh and, and Doha. And even last week, uh, there have been reports that uh, the Kuwaiti foreign minister was in Qatar and even the Emir is understood to have visited Kuwait in the last week. So I think um, Kuwait will be the first point of contact for uh, some sort of mediator in the region. Um, I think Turkey is difficult to see because I think the relationship between Turkey and the Arab world has been at times quite uh, uh, tricky, uh, considering uh, some of uh, particularly Egypt's uh, position in, uh, in the Saudi alliance, where Egypt has strongly um, accused uh, Turkey of supporting groups such as the Muslim Brothers. So I, I don't see how the Turkish government can get involved until, you know, maybe at a much later stage if, if this crisis doesn't seem to be getting solved. Okay. Hossam Abu Gabal, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Dubai.